my sound is okay. Hopefully we're okay. It's 8.03 here in Maine. I am trying to do my regular Monday class. So hopefully um, I'm doing okay and you can hear me. Sound is fine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, we're just going to carry on. We're going to pretend that none of the technical difficulties happened. And I am ready to erase this day. But first, we're going to do a card class together. So it's going to be awesome. We are using the um, Rustic Harvest um, bundle tonight as we do our card class. And we're actually doing, again, we're going to be doing three cards. So these, this is the back of the cards that we're going to be doing the back of the cards. Do they look like they'd be Christmas or fall autumn cards? Because I got some interesting colors here. Um, but they are really actually fall autumn cards. They're going to be fantastically beautiful. I do love them. Um, before we get going on our fall cards, I just want to remind you that my October online class is also still available. Um, I'm extending the sign up for that through the 15th and you're going to be making six cards they're going to be very Christmassy and beautiful so if you would like to sign up for that class let me know and I will make sure that you get the link the sign up will be good through the 15th and I have all kinds of information on that um, that kind of class if you're interested so we're going to do the rustic harvest class tonight so let me get over to my workspace we're going to jump right in because we have already had a little bit of a delay tonight so let me get over to my workspace and we will continue onward Okay, good job, everybody. I'm so glad that you guys you guys can hear me. Okay, so we're over here at my workspace. Just wanted to make sure. <gasps> Rustic Harvest class. So again, this is um, my new class format. Any um, $35 order this week, um, today's Monday, obviously, right through Sunday, um, you're going to get the free card kits. So you're going to get the card kits from the cards we're making tonight in the class. If you have a $50 order, you are going to get the card kits and a gift. And I'm asking you to use the host code 9M49JB. 9V this week. So I will share that again later on um, in another post. But we are using the Rustic Harvest bundle. And this is the Hello Harvest stamp set. It's been very popular. In fact, I think the dies are on back order for a little bit. These are the Rustic Harvest dies. We're going to be using these quite a bit tonight. And they are awesome. If you have this bundle, I would love to know that you already have it and how much you love it. Because it's a really great autumn set. Of course, it's got the pumpkin. It's got a leaf and some flowers that you can color in some amazing sentiments, right? Um, and it is on page 48 and 49 in the July to December mini. They've got lots of great options here on cards. Um, they've got some beautiful paper, which we're going to be jumping into tonight as well. Um, the samples follow on to page 50, and there's even another sample in the very back of the catalog. Um, so sample heavy on this one, which is nice, which means there's a lot of versatility. Now, um, let me show you our very first card so you can see what we're starting with tonight. I'm calling this one um, a simple card. This is a very simple card. Clean and simple is something that I've been noticing a little bit on Facebook lately. Clean and simple has a lot of white space in it, and it's a pretty easy card to put together, but how beautiful is this, right? So there's some really awesome embossing on here with a little bit of shading. And I promised earlier today that we were going to heat things up quite a bit in my craft room. You're going to notice that this sentiment has some gold embossing on it so pretty right and the gold just really um, accents this card just so perfectly and so lovely so we're going to jump into our first card here now this is very vanilla i don't know if it's showing up very vanilla on your end i have a very vanilla thick card base so uh stampin up sells vanilla and white in the thick card bases and i love them for card bases because when i put layers on my card it gives it a little bit more heft and it holds the layers up really nicely so i do have a very vanilla thick card base this um second paper that I'm going to layer on top is not. This is regular Very Vanilla and there's definitely a difference in the weight between the two. But when you're using it for layers and stamping, um, the, the thinner Vanilla is very fine right there. And of course we're going to be using some Cajun Craze. This is a very popular fall color. I did a little poll on Positive Paper Crafters recently and most people really liked Cajun Craze as their go-to for our fall color cards. I'm just going to bring the big guy in right now and we're going to start some die cutting and we're going to start with this cute little very vanilla piece that I showed you earlier and we are going to actually bring in some stitched with whimsy dies and I think I want this guy right here 
Now these dies are very interesting dies. I'm going to put this on here just like this and I'm going to run this through my Stampin' Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine right here. So I'm going to put that on there, run it through. Now these stitched with whimsy dies are different from your normal dies. I'm going to show you as it comes out the other end here just what I'm talking about. And I do love these dies. I like to actually use the dies on paper that is very similar sized. So you're gonna see here that this did not cut out a rectangle. This does not cut all the way through. All it does is add this little whimsical stitching. It gives you a nice little border. There's actually two lines that kind of meander together and it gives you that nice little stitching on there. And I just think it's a really sweet little way to add some interest to your card. And you can see here, there's a larger rectangle. The one that I used was the second size down. And then there's actually some squares and some some more sentiment type pieces so these are the stitched with whimsy dies and just makes a really cute little setting when we layer this onto our Cajun craze it just gives you that nice little stitching now I am NOT a sewer but I'm a fan of watching people use their sewing machines when they create cards and it always makes me jealous although of course I don't know that I want to actually get out a sewing machine and sew paper. I just love the effect. So it's nice that we can have um, some of that right through our dies. Now I'm using some very vanilla and some mossy meadow cardstock right now. I'm setting up my uh, stamping machine again here. And I'm just going to run these through. And we're going to get our pumpkins and our pumpkin stem die cut next. So here we go, let me set aside all my parts and pieces. Now the fun thing about these dies, and I don't know if they show up here or not, they do kind of show up. You can see this interesting little pattern on here. These actually create embossing when we die cut. Now it might be kind of hard to see on here, but trust me, there's embossed on here as well as the die cut, which is really cool. The green may show up actually a little bit better, I'm not sure. Again, um, it's really hard to tell, but I did choose Mossy Meadow to go with our Very Vanilla. So let me get rid of my scraps, move my dies back over onto my magnet sheet so nobody gets lost today in the craft room, and move my plates aside so we can work with our pumpkin. Now, you might think it's interesting that I chose to do vanilla instead of Cajun or orange pumpkin, right? Because Typically, we have pumpkins that are orange. Let me bring my card back in. I did give it just a small tint of orange, but it is definitely, I started out with a very vanilla pumpkin. So let's, actually, let's put a couple layers on our card so you can kind of see where we're going with this. We're just gonna put our stitched whimsy layer right over top of our Cajun craze. And I love these, these colors together. This is just really pretty. So again, layers, I love to do a lot of layers. We're going to put the Cajun Craze right on top of, oh, and I'm looking at my card and I actually, you know what, I actually um, used dimensionals. So I'm just going to cheat a little bit here. Even though I've got glue on it, I'm actually going to put some dimensionals on here. We're going to pop this layer up. I made these cards earlier today. And um, sometimes I forget what I do. You know, I do all these cards and I go on and I do other projects and the day goes on and I had printer problems and I spent probably two hours with support uh, trying to get my printer figured out and to no avail. And then I lost a chicken for today. I lost a chicken temporarily today. Like one of my chickens ran away and because the rooster was being mean and Frank and I spent some time outside waiting for the rooster or for the chicken to come home. So my I had to wait for my chicken to, to come home to roost tonight. So I have had just a little bit of a crazy day. Um, that's a little bit what happened in my world today besides making lovely cards. So you can see here how pretty this is with just the vanilla, the Cajun and the vanilla. And I do have that um, popped up on layers now. So it does look much, much better. All right, let's bring in my pumpkin again. So if I were to put this very vanilla pumpkin on this very vanilla card base. You can barely see this pumpkin, right? But just a little bit of sponging is all it's going to take to bring out the magic of our pumpkin. So let's bring in a blending brush and some Cajun craze. We're going to add a little bit of color here. Now I'm going to just go ahead and get a little bit of ink on here. And I'm going to start with the right corner of my um, 
the smaller section of the pumpkin, which is actually the like the middle. And I'm just gonna come in off the side here and I'm just gonna hit the side and I'm gonna kind of come across a little bit. So I've come across just a little bit and not too much. I'm just kind of staying here on the right side of it and leaving it just like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here and I'm gonna be a little bit heavier on this side and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm just going to actually pick up my pumpkin and just use my brush kind of like I would use a sponge and just put a little bit of ink there, maybe a little bit along the top. So I'm just kind of catching most of the, the color on this side, a little bit of color on this side. And when we put it together, it's just super magical. It doesn't have to all be colored in. Um, let me put it on my card base so you can kind of see here how that color just kind of it just pulls together and it looks so nice and it's just a little bit of ink this one is definitely um, inked heavier than my original and I actually think I like it better so there's always fun in playing and experimenting there's um, a high probability that I would never make this card the exact same way twice bring my original back in so you can see it again all right, so I just glued this uh, piece right onto this piece, uh, pumpkin onto pumpkin. And for the stem, I'm going to actually put a little bit of glue here on the bottom of it. And then I'm gonna bring my pumpkin up over top of it. And I'm gonna glue it this way. So here's the back of it. So you can kind of see how the back looks and it's gonna kind of come down here a little bit from that first middle layer. And here's my fancy little pumpkin. Isn't it adorable? And I'm just checking, I did some things on that one too. All right, let's talk about our fun sentiment before we go any farther here. I do have a piece of Cajun craze and we're going to, as promised, do some heat embossing today. So I need the Versamark, I need my little, my little powder buddy. This is an anti-static pouch. It's gonna help to remove some of the static off of the paper. And for this one, we are actually going to be embossing in gold. So I'm just gonna get that ready, get everything ready to go here. And let me go ahead and ink up my sentiment. And I'm just gonna center this right on this tiny little piece of Cajun Craze. It's a little top side, but I think we might be okay. Let's just check it out and see. And this has, you are such a blessing on it. I think it worked out pretty well. I don't see too much straggly powder that I would want to remove. So I think I'm good with that. And let me move my powder aside. I'm just gonna hit my heat gun here for a second and warm it up. And a little clip will keep my fingers from getting too hot. And we're just gonna heat emboss this. and watch the magic happen, right? I love watching the metallic take shape after it's heated. You can kind of see it's getting shiny. You see the shiny parts coming along. As soon as everything is shiny, it's just beautiful. Okay, I think that is good to go. I'll take another look at it here and kind of brush off this white residue. All right, so here is my little shiny. You are such a blessing. So when I turn it in the light, you can definitely see how pretty that is. Now for this card, I just took some scissors and I chopped it at an angle right here. So I chopped a nice angle and then I did the same thing on this side and I kind of, I made the angle go in the same direction. And I kind of have to hold it funny because it just helps me to make sure my angles are going in the same direction. And then that's a super easy way. If you don't like flagging your sentiments, that's just a really easy way to get those, get a nice little look to it. All right, we're going to bring in some gold twine and we're gonna cut a little bit of this off. Let's see, I think I'm gonna measure about seven inches for my gold twine. Now this is getting kind of near the end of the spool, so it's extra curly, which is really nice because I do kind of want it to be curly. We're gonna put some gold on here. It's really fancy and pretty. I'm just gonna play with it here for a second while I figure out how it's gonna lay on here. Okay, so I just kind of want it to curl up and behave if it will. That would be lovely. 
All right, I'll find my tear and tape. I'm kind of holding it down here. I need some extra hands in the craft room today. I need somebody to come, come and hold that for me. All right, I'm gonna just put a little bit of tear and tape and catch just some of this ribbon here off to the side, maybe right about here. Let's see if that's gonna stay nicely or not. Because my pumpkin's gonna come over here. So there we go. I just wanted to kind of curl up over here and, and just kind of be nice on the side here. Now this one curled up so nicely. I actually kind of tucked the ends in and around. Although you can see the end right there is loose. So it, it's not as, not as, you know, it looks very nice, but it's not quite as formed. Um, this one kind of has the ends out a little bit more. So they are just a little bit more crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and put some dimensionals on the back of my pumpkin. We're gonna use three there. And my pumpkin's going to help hold down this crazy string. I'm gonna put it right there. I'm gonna lift this up just a little bit higher on this one, I think, and kind of let that just be a little bit looser. And play with my ribbon here for a second. Okay, and then we're gonna bring in our sentiment. Now our sentiment actually only needs one dimensional on it. So it's gonna have a dimensional over here on the side that says you and blessing, because the other side is actually going to lay across and kind of be on our pumpkin, which I think I might put up a little bit higher. No, maybe not, kind of like so. Okay, so this is gonna come across. One dimensional, a little bit of glue, because this glue spot right here is going to hit the pumpkin. Maybe I'll come down here and push that ribbon up a little bit. Okay, I'm still not quite sure. Okay, we're working on it. I'm, I'm kind of crisscrossing it here a little bit and seeing how it's gonna be. It's gonna be a little bit there. That's looking a little bit more fun. Okay, so after we get our ribbon and we've got our sentiment on, we're just gonna add a few pearls. And we've got these beautiful red and green adhesive back pearls, but there's more than red and green here. There's also silver and gold. And I'm gonna add a couple of these. These are very delicate little sweet pearls. Absolutely love them. So I'm just gonna put a few of these on here kind of bring out some more gold here. So we've got some gold twine, some gold embossing, and we've got a little gold um, ribbon here. So here is our very first card. Super quick and easy to make, super fun. I think if I redid this card, I would probably tuck my strings in a little bit better. And to be honest, I might rework this one at a later date and fix my ribbon just a little bit because I really like how it kind of swooped around here. So again, I've got a, I've got a, a loose string, so it's, it's only tucked in on the end with some tape. Um, I probably could have done a better job at this one, but with the day that I'm having, you guys, this might be as good as it gets today. So I'm telling you what, there are always days in the craft room that are better than others, right? Just like in life. All right, so that was our first card. Let me clean up here for just a second, and we're gonna pop into card number two. And I'm gonna just check real quick again my feed here. And, okay, I think we're still doing good. I just wanted to make sure I was still doing good over here and being live and everything. I would be uh, really, really devastated at this point if my class ended just abruptly without um, me wanting it to end. All right, let's pop into card number two. This is gonna be card number two. Now this one is using Mary Merlot. We're gonna be designer series paper heavy on this one. Also super, super beautiful. I love the paper here for this card. So again, a nice rich autumn color here. And, but not in your face pumpkin pie, right? So we're gonna talk a little bit about the designer paper on here um, before we jump into this one. So I wanted to show you that when you get the Rustic Harvest, I don't even know if this is called Rustic Harvest. It is Rustic Harvest. Designer series paper, you have a sheet that looks just like this. So this is 12 by 12. So it actually um, has the flowers and butterflies on each half. And it has like a black background. It has a chalk effect, kind of like that white, um, like if you took a white marker and chalked quite a few things. So if you're using this on cards, and you may have seen this used on cards quite a bit, the first thing and the easiest thing to do is, this is obviously a 12 by 12 paper. 
is to cut it right in half at six inches. So if you cut it at six inches, you're going to have half of it over here with butterflies and flowers and half of it over here with butterflies and flowers. And basically what you're gonna get is this. This is the six inch piece right here. So you can see exactly where we're going with this, right? Now, the next thing I suggest you do, if you wanna break it down to fit onto your A2 card base, right? Cause it's going to be too big. This is six inches. Our A2 is five and a half. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna chop this down a little bit. I would take um, a quarter or an eighth of an inch off of the black because you don't need the extra black here at the top. So chop a little bit of the black off and then your butterflies are going to be down a little bit farther. And then from the bottom, cut off another section off the bottom so that you're really coming up with the right amount. Now this one doesn't have butterflies on it, but you're coming up with the right amount to use for your card front. So I ended up with a three by five and a quarter here for my card front. You can see this one has the little butterfly at the top. This one doesn't. So when you're playing with your paper, let's see, this is the same one. This is the same one or different one. One side of your paper, depending on how you're cutting it, one side of your paper is going to have a spot where there's no butterflies. So this one will have a butterfly. This section wouldn't. And then this one, these two would have butterflies. So depending on how you chop them, you may or may not end up with butterflies. So I just wanted to explain that. Um, you're not always going to get a butterfly every time you cut this paper, but this paper is so fantastic. I actually have used it on two out of the three cards tonight. So let me bring in all of these things. Now this is a super, super easy card because we're not actually stamping this. This is just already done for us. We're, we're working, we're relying on our designer paper for the hard heavy lifting. I have a Mary Merlot base and then I have another layer on here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it is embossed with the Leaf 3D, I think it's called, oh, let's see, what is it called, Julie? It's called the Leaf Fall Embossing Folder. This is a really great folder um, because it's got the leaves that kind of come at an angle and swoosh across here. Super fun and pretty. Um, and I wanted to show you when I emboss this, um, typically when we put our paper into the uh, embossing folders, there's this really nice black line here at the bottom and that helps us to line up our paper straight. So we have a nice straight edge and everything gets embossed beautifully. But on this card, I wanted to do a little bit different because I really want my embossing to be as high at the top as it can to come all the way down and then just touch the corner over here. So instead of lining up my paper on that nice little straight line, I'm actually going to ignore the line this time and I'm going to emboss so that I get embossing way up at the top and embossing all the way to the bottom, which I wouldn't get if I stopped at this line. And I still have some here on the side. So let me bring my machine back in again. And we're going to emboss this piece of Mary Merlot cardstock. Now, if you don't have this embossing folder, this is a really, really good one to purchase. It is a 3D, so you are going to need, besides your base plate and your machine, you're going to need the number four plate. This is for the thick and heavy duty embossing folders. And that's all you need. You're gonna put it through hinge side first and off it goes. Let me move my machine around here and you're gonna see, I just love this folder. So pretty. So there it is, just like that. It might be hard to see on the picture here in the camera, but really awesome embossing folder. All right, let me move that aside and we're just, just gonna bring in our card base here. Just making sure that it opens in the correct direction. And I'm adding some nice adhesive on the back and we're gonna just layer this. So this is like tone on tone. And I did put this one on without dimensionals. So I didn't make a mistake this time. This one actually went on flat. So we've got that tone on tone, but it does have that, that little bit of um, a frame around it as well, which is so much fun. Now in the catalog, this one actually was almost, this is almost a case card, but not quite. I'm gonna bring the catalog in real quick and just take another look here. In the catalog, they, actually use some ribbon here and I'm going to use designer paper instead so that it's less bulky and they also embossed 
actually they didn't emboss, they stamped on designer series paper here. And I thought that it would look really nice because I really wanted to emboss with the black. So if we're continuing the black from our designer paper and the white chalk line, this white and black uh, sentiment, I think looks way nicer than the one in the catalog. I'm not sure what you guys like better, but I really like the way that I chose to do mine a little bit differently. So instead of the ribbon, like I said, I actually am also using some paper from the same paper pack. Uh, a lot of the papers on the back of these are black and white, which is really nice. And I'm actually just going to layer this together a little bit here. So I'm going to put some glue on the edge. So this is the, pa the paper that's going to face up. This one is going to go over top of it. So I'm actually going to just put some adhesive here on the edge of this paper and then I'm going to line this one up over top of it and I can even use my grid lines here. So if you have some of this fine grid paper you can kind of line things up so that you know that they're straight. Now this is not the same length. Um, I did chop it a little bit less than my flower designer paper. As the glue wiggles around here I'm trying to like corral my paper here kind of like I was corralling chickens earlier today. All right, so let's see if that's working for me. So this is the back. This is what it looks like from the back. And this is the front. I just wanted a little bit of this peeking out. You can see that it doesn't quite reach all the way to the end. There's just a little bit of room there in between. But it gives me a little bit of an accent piece here. When I lay it down on the Mary Merlot, it just helps to really make this stand out. And I like that little bit of white there. I just felt that it needed that extra bit of brightness. Now, if you were tucking ribbon instead of using designer paper on this, you would probably want to bump up your designer paper with some dimensionals because it would, um, it would not lay nicely over top of an edge of ribbon. Over top of an edge of designer paper, it's actually laying quite flat. But if this was ribbon, it would be very bumpy over here. So I would suggest if you're using ribbon to then put your flower paper on some dimensionals so that you can hide that ribbon underneath. All right, we need to work on our sentiment now. And I do have a piece of black cardstock. We're gonna bring back in the Versamark we are going to search for our sentiment so that says wishing you the loveliest day. This has this nice little banner on it too, which is super sweet. And bring this back in and we're looking for white embossing powder. So we've used the gold, now we're moving on to the white. And again, I love the white embossing powder on black because it's almost like that chalk, that chalkboard effect, which is really awesome. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do again, I'm just gonna, put this on here, add quite a bit of powder here to my black cardstock. I think that black cardstock is not the most forgiving if you actually um, get embossing powder where you don't want it. Um, it's, it's the one that's really gonna show up, show up your error the most. All right, so here we go. Got that embossed. I don't know if you can see that, or I'm sorry, I got that stamped with the Versamark. And here it goes. And I can already see this little boo-boo up here. I don't know if you can see this or not. I actually feel like there's probably a hair in here that kind of caused me to have some problems. So I'm just going to kind of swipe this around. Now I am die cutting this, so I'm not really worried about the surrounding areas. I'm just kind of focusing on, let me get this a little, try to get rid of some of that. All right. All right, we're gonna make that one work. So here it is before I heat emboss it. And I just wanted to get rid of some of that stray powder. I see a little bit right there still. <sighs> so I use a combination of just a regular paintbrush and tapping on the back of it and blowing out a little bit. I do all those fun tricks, right? The only thing I'm not doing is standing on my head right now. Um, I'm gonna heat up my tool again here. And I'm just gonna put this on a little clothespin and we're gonna heat emboss this one and then we're gonna die cut this out. Now the white gets really white after it's melted in. Before it's melted in, it kind of looks opaque or ivory toned, but as, as I um, see the heat setting this powder, 
it definitely gets a lot brighter and whiter. Make sure I have everything. I'm thinking it looks pretty good. Okay. I love that um, the heat embossing just takes such a short time. Um, and there we go. We've got that heat embossed. So now we can bring in our machine and die cut this out with our die. Okay, so I just gotta set my sandwich back up here. We've got our die plate. We have our clear plate. We have our paper and we have this lovely little ribbon die. I'm gonna set this on here and try to line this up as best I can and put in my very bowed plate and pop it through. Okay, let's see how we did. Not too bad, it certainly could be better, but again, I'm just having one of those days, you guys. So here it is, all die cut out, so lovely. And we are going to put this on our card front using some dimensionals. Let me bring in my cards again here so we can see where we're at. So dimensionals for this one. And we're gonna pop this on. Now this, again, this was a pretty super simple card um, made easy with the designer paper. So I'm just gonna add three dimensionals on here, pop those off, and then put this on here and just figure out where the best part's going to be to put this. I think maybe right about there. I kind of like it to be a little bit on the paper, but also off to the edge here as well. And for this one, we're gonna accent with some pearls, just some white pearls this time. And I have a take your pick tool somewhere, here it is. So we're going to get a few of these pearls off of here. I'm gonna use just one of the big ones down here. And these come in a couple of different sizes. So you've got choices on the larger and the smaller, which is fantastic. So there we go, I've got my three little pearls on there, kind of accenting my sign there. And that one was, again, another super easy card. Now this one did not have the little butterfly on here. If you had a small butterfly stamp that you could stamp on here and emboss with white embossing powder, you could create your own butterfly up here on the top of this card. So there we have just two different looks with that designer paper, kind of the same card, super easy, super quick. And that is card number two. All right, so hopefully everything is still going well on this recording end and we can move on to our third card. I'm just gonna pop over and check messages really quickly and make sure, okay, I think we're good. I think we're still good. I think we're still recording. So we are still recording. Uh, Amy, the embossing folder was called Leaf Fall 3D embossing folder. It is in the, um, the July, or June, July, July to December mini. It's in the mini catalog. Um, I love this one. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It is one of the six by six. Uh, embossing folders and I really hope that they carry it over beyond the December sell date because I do love that one. I've actually used that one quite a bit. Okay we're gonna move on to a card number three. Now this one is I usually save the most complex card for last. I feel like I should be warmed up after cards one and two, right? So card number three should be a piece of cake. Um, and this one is featuring Mossy Meadow and this one's also featuring the leaf quite a bit. So you know I kind of um, glazed over some of these stamps today from the Hello Harvest stamp set. Um, this obviously is the stamp that we used on card number two. We use the sentiment car, uh, sentiment stamp on the first card. So you can see that we're, um, we're not focusing so much on the stamp set. We're focusing a lot on the dies. And um, so obviously the pumpkin you can just create with the dies, which is really nice. If you wanna just stamp a pumpkin and color it in, you can certainly do that too. And then there's a die that will cut out this awesome pumpkin. This is a nice little pumpkin too. Um, but when I send you your card kits in the mail, it's, it's nice for me to be able to send you a card kit that has the parts and pieces that you can create a card for. So if you place an order and get this card kit, the only thing you're missing is a sentiment. And you could use any sentiment to make this card at home. And of course, you're gonna have to add your own ink here onto your pumpkin 
um, if you get this card kit, the only thing you're going to be missing, again, uh, I'm going to give you the banner, but you'd have to just stamp something in that or replace it with something else that you have if you don't have this uh, this bundle at home. And so that way, if you're getting the card kits, you really can create these cards quite similar to what I'm doing. So again, the same thing here, um, you're, we're going to be embossing the hello sentiment, which is from our stamp set right here. We're going to be doing this in copper. So we used gold, then white, and now we're going to be using the copper embossing powder. And this one, the only stamping that's being done is with the leaf stamp right here. And if you have any leaf stamps at home and you get my card kits, you're going to be able to put your own leaves in here. Or if you already have the hello harvest, you're good to go. You can just grab your stamp set and your dies and create the cards exactly how I have got mine done here for tonight. But I love this one. This one to me could be, um, if you don't use hello, you could use happy birthday here. This could be a really great fall themed birthday card. This is very masculine card as well. So um, I like to just kind of show you different things besides pretty flowers and you know, I could probably do Christmas cards year round, but that's for another discussion, I think. All right, so let's bring in some parts and pieces here. Um, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the designer paper. This, again, is from the Rustic Harvest collection, which I did mention was white and black on one side. And then, of course, all these great colors. Um, we had flowers. We have greens and yellows. We have all kinds of beautiful colors. I love this paper uh, very, very much. Like, this might be one of my favorite paper packs ever. So I like to do layers. So I've got some layering going on here. And these are really simple. Uh, when you get your card kits at home, all this is going to be cut up for you. And if you decide that you want the black and white to be up, you can do black and white too, right? These are all your options. But I'm going to go ahead and put these two layers together. So I'm going to keep the green up. And I just have a really nice little mat here. Mats are one of my favorite things on cards because I feel like they really elevate a card. Uh, when you see pictures that are framed and they have nice mats on them, I feel like cards kind of follow suit. So we are just going to set this here for right now. We're not putting this together quite yet, but I wanted to show you that you're going to just get your, your, um, your beautiful designer paper. You're going to get your layers here. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and put these together. Now, if you're not a fan of all these layers, you don't have to use everything on the same card, but look how, I just look how pretty it is already. I just love this little kind of layout right here. We are not going to layer together this because we do need to do some stamping and let's do that next because we're going to be using our leaf stamp quite extensively for this card. In fact, we're going to use Cajun, Mary Merlot, Crushed Curry, and Mossy Meadow. I have a whole bunch of inks here that we're going to start with. So let's do the mossy first. And I probably should grab out my little chamois here because I'm going to have to do a little bit of cleaning up in between. But we're going to start with our card base. So this is a mossy meadow card base. And we're going to do some background stamping right on the card base itself. So I don't know if you can see here along the edges that it's a little bit dark in some spots. Maybe you can even make out where I've stamped some leaves. This is exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to go ahead and along the top and the outside and I'm just going to shift the pattern around a little bit. Now the inside of this is going to really be covered up so I'm not too worried about how that plays here on this card. Um, I'm just focusing on turning my block around as you can see right and getting a whole bunch of interesting leaf patterns happening here. I think I'm going to have one come in this time. And I think I have room for one right here kind of going up. So you're just kind of fitting them across and around. And here's what it looks like when you're done. Isn't that awesome? And this, again, is tone on tone ink. It just looks so rich and dark, this Mary Merlot. No, this is Mossy Meadow. This is Mossy Meadow. Um, and we're going to go ahead and stamp two leaves over here, Mossy Meadow on Mossy Meadow. And I'm actually going to be die cutting these ones. So I'm going to cut them apart to die cut them. And I'm actually going to have to run that through twice. We'll do that in a little bit. Let me put Mossy away. Let me clean up my stamp really quick. Make sure we're clean here. Because I don't want to get green ink in my yellow ink pad. Make sure we're clean. Okay. Let's set some of this aside and let's bring in this little piece of white cardstock. And this is where we're going to do the rest of our leaves, just like so. So we're going to start with the crushed curry at the top. 
and I'm gonna put this one in kind of at an angle coming across the top here so he's he's put up there pretty close to the top let me just go ahead and clean this off put curry away make sure it's clean my stampin my little chamois here probably could use some cleaning itself i should have done that all right we're going to bring in crushed or nope cajun craze is next cajun craze and this time i'm going to turn my leaf stamp in the opposite direction and i'm going to snug it kind of close to the crushed curry so here it is up at the, up, up at the top i'm leaving a little bit of room here let me just get some of that off of my stamp clean up make sure we're not chasing anything around there we go okay and put this one away now we're going to bring in mary merlot and i actually earlier today i was play i play with these cards as i make them so here was uh here was an early attempt where i did crushed curry cajun craze and cherry cobbler and i thought the cajun and cherry were very very similar so i wanted to deepen this color and that's when i decided to do the, the crushed curry, the Cajun, and the Mary Merlot. So you can kind of see here uh, the difference in the richer tone on the one on the left. The one on the right is more, you know, kind of a similar tone. So I was playing with colors a little bit here before I found the right combination that I wanted to use. You guys know how much I love to play with color, right? And of course, I already have a little bit of something going on with my color swap card for Wednesday over on Positive Paper Crafters. So one of these three cards that I'm making tonight will have a nice color swap. Now, when I did this um, Mary Merlot leaf, I actually left a little bit of room here. So you can kind of see there's a gap between leaf number two and leaf number three. That is by design because I want my sentiment to come across here and I don't want it to cover up too much of the leaves. So I kind of spaced it out just perfectly so I could get my sentiment across and it would just fit really nicely without covering up a really pretty leaf all right so there is our leaf stamping now I'm going to bring in the die cutting machine so that we can die cut out my little leaves here so I guess that's all back up again we got our platform and there unfortunately there's only one leaf die in this set this die set only has one it would be great if it had two. I know you guys know personally that they uh, will, a lot of times they'll put two or three of the same flower or pine cone in a die set. And it's just really nice because then you can actually die cut, um, you know, more than one at a time. And here's what it's gonna look like when it pops out. But unfortunately, this little, um, I'm just gonna rotate my plate rotate my base plate you always want your base plate to have a really nice flat contact surface and it's a good idea to rotate your plates a little bit when you feel them start to bow um, and something else that I'm doing is um, when I put this one through and it's got like a bubble on it so you can kind of see um, I try to make sure that the bubble is facing up so that when it goes through the roller it's actually pushing the bubble down and that helps the plates to not get kind of accentuated in a bowed manner opposite of what we already got going on because it just it just gets worse from here so if you're using your plates make sure you're rotating them quite a bit and um, be mindful of the way that they bow and the way that you're using them because you will have much better success if it's not crazy all right we're gonna do a little bit of gluing here we need to we need to bring together our crushed curry cardstock with these beautiful leaves we did. Again, another mat because Julie loves mats. Julie is just a fan of this beautiful matting technique. I think I have a little glue booger here. It's kind of hard and, yep, there we go. Got it off, okay. Um, so there we go. We have this beautiful mat here. So pretty, right? All right, now we can just kind of layer these together. Let me bring this card back in. Um, these are all going down flat for a little bit because there's a lot of layers here and it would be absolutely crazy. I mean, super crazy. You could do it, but you'd have like an 18 layer cake here if you put dimensionals behind everything, right? All right, so this one, I just kind of snugged over to the right. So I've, I see a little bit here of the background stamping we did on the card base. 
This one I'm going to put right about here, kind of making that nice little layer. And earlier I did tell you that a lot of the center would be covered, so I really only focus my stamping on the outside, and you can kind of see that really in effect here. All right, so we've got that on. Now this layer right here, we are actually going to use dimensionals on, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop those on there now, so I don't forget in like a minute and accidentally glue it down. So I already know going in, this one is going to have dimension. Now these little leaves here are gonna kind of, kind of come over this way they're going to be just be my little accents here on the side. I'm just doing a little dry fitting so that I can kind of see where I want my leaves to go. So you can see where I'm at right here. My sentiment, which is not even embossed yet, we'll have to do that last, we will come over here. I am loving this so much right now. This is like perfect. So I'm just going to kind of pop these up one at a time and put them back down in approximately, approximately the same position that I had them. Um, pretty close. They'll be pretty close. So here's my two little leaves kind of coming off to the side. Yes, I love it. It's so pretty. All right, we're going to take the dimensionals off of here and pop this on. This one's coming together very nicely. All right. So beautiful, right? Look at that. Just gorgeous. So I really wanted to do some green here with all of this yellow because I have so much green here everywhere else. So this kind of helps to um, have everything blend together just really, really nicely. We are going to use some of the Baker's Twine Essentials and I chose the one that looks most like the linen thread. So it's kind of like this crumb cake color twine and we're going to make a nice hefty bow. I'm going to cut 10 inches of this. We're going to make a nice little bow with this twine. Now this is a little bit thicker than the linen thread. The linen thread's a little bit coarser. Okay, so we're going to have problems with bows again, I think. But that's just to reason. Just It makes my day perfect. There we go. All right, I think I got it. I just wanted to do a simple bow tonight and I want my bow to be really big and loopy like a big big loopy bow lots of bow here so you can see from my sample here i've got just really big loops and it just sits under here really sweetly and i want this guy to do the exact same thing this bow might need to this side might need to come down just a smidge of course i have some glue on my on my fingers my fingers are a little sticky so that makes everything even more challenging. All right, I'm gonna bring in just a little glue dot and I'm gonna find kind of the center of where my two leaves meet here. I'm just gonna put that little glue dot in there and push that in spot. And then I'm gonna take my knot, the knotted end here of my bow where it kind of met in the middle. And I'm just gonna put this in here. So I, I'm putting it pretty much sideways, right? So you're, typically a bow would kind of come you know, like this. So it's kind of sideways on this card. And when we when we get our sentiment on here, when it gets um, embossed and pretty, it's going to also help to hold that little middle of the bow in place so it doesn't flop around too, too much. But I kind of like that it's just, it's a little bit unkempt. I like that a lot, actually. All right, so the last thing we have to do really on this card is our sentiment. So let's get that going here. Now I said uh, copper embossing powder. Again, we're using Versamark. We are using the Hello Sentiment. Looking for my little, um, my buddy here that's going to help take care of the static. Okay, and we've got Hello here. I'm actually going to set that right like that because I'm looking for copper powder. Okay, and I don't want my stamp to get dried out. I want that ink to be nice and wet on my stamp so that the copper powder does its business. And we're gonna go ahead and put this on here, kind of in the middle-ish. Let's say in the middle-ish, right? We've got our hello. And we're going to go ahead and get our copper. So there we go, that looks pretty good. Get rid of my powder here and turn on my heat tool one more time. So we really heated it up a lot today in my craft room. It's, uh, it's getting chillier and chillier as fall comes on. So this is our gold scent, our gold. This is our copper embossed sentiment. And it's 
just thinking about turning. There we go. Getting that nice shine here. Okay, we should be good there. Now we have our copper done here. It's so pretty. So again, this has that super shiny, if I hold on the light, you can see that nice little copper, right? All right, so for this one, I'm actually flagging the ends a little bit, like old fashioned flagging. I actually want my paper snips for this. All right, so in the past, I've done it a little bit differently and I kind of saw something that might make it a little bit easier to flag. So normally I just kind of went from the angle and I went to the angle, but here's something else you can do. You can go from the middle and just cut in however far you want to go in, right? So I just slit that middle right there. And now from each end, I'm gonna go from this corner to where the slit stops and angle it that way. So I've just taken care of one end and now I'm gonna start from this corner and come toward the middle and kind of cut this one off. Let's see, did I get it all? I have to just, and you always make those little adjustments at the end there, just tiny little cuts until it comes off. And there you go. So there's a nice little flagging on there. And I kind of actually, I kind of roughed up my edges a little bit here. I kind of made my little pointies a little bit curly. You can kind of see it here in this card, just for some extra little bit of interest. It's always fun to do things like that. All right, so the hello is gonna come right across here and it does not need any dimensionals or anything like that we're just going to actually add some glue to the middle and it's going to come across as i promised it's going to kind of hit the edge of the bow here and it's going to come across and so the glue is holding right here in the middle so this is actually kind of loose this little spot here hanging off but it kind of flows nicely into the green so you can see just like that how pretty is our hello card i really like this one a lot actually i think this is my favorite i am a fan of the greens of course green is my favorite color but i really like this hello card so now i'm going to just show you the cards again really quickly so we have the hello one we have the wishing you the loveliest day with the merry merlot and we started out with our clean and simple little pumpkin right here. So just to remind you, um, if you do place an order with me this week, $35 or more, I will send you a card kit for um, so that you can create these three cards. So you're going to get one of each um, in your card kit in the mail. I will be sending them out. Um, so $35 order or more, you're going to get the free card kits. If you order 50 or more, you get the card kits and a free gift. I do have a host code free to use if your order is under 150. So those are our three cards for today. And we did it. All right. This was such a challenging day. Um, hi, everybody that's on here. I'm just checking messages really quickly. And I actually, as I come on, I don't even see myself on the screen right now. So hopefully everyone is still with me. We got the card class in today. This was our Rustic Harvest card class with our three cards using that beautiful suite. I love the suite. I believe that the dies, I believe everything is in stock except for the, um, on the suite, there's little, um, you know what, on the last card, I totally forgot to add the embellishments. I was so excited that we were wrapping up here. Um, there's these leaf I'm going to hold these up here. These little leaf and ambery type things here um, that are, so I meant to add these little pretty gems onto my card. And they come with these little maple leaves. Uh, it's a little set. These are actually on back order. So the whole suite uh, can't be purchased, but individual things or bu the bundle can be. I'm going to add them onto my card. Let me show you the card one more time. This is the card. So you can see that I'm missing over here, gems. Um, on the, the side over here, I have those little sparkly gems. I meant to add them on there. So I will add them on there, uh, make some minor adjustments to my cards because, oh my goodness, what a night I've had. I'm telling you what. So thank you so much for joining me for this adventure today. Um, I hope you love these cards. This is, um, so this is the second week that I've done my card class this way. So instead of just copying something out of the catalog, I'm actually coming up with my own designs, changing things up. If they are something that's in the catalog, changing them up to ways that I want to do them a little bit differently. So I hope that you're enjoying these. And I'm also trying to make them 
actual card kits that would be easy to mail to you so that you can stamp and create these at home as well. So thank you so much for joining me for this card class. I am hoping that this uh, video all turned out okay. If you would like to place an order and need help, please let me know. I can certainly do that with you. And uh, if you want more information on my Christmassy card class, um, that uh, deadline to sign up is coming up as well on the 15th. So just let me know and uh, I can talk to you a bit more about that too. All right. So that's it for me for tonight. Thank you so much again for joining me. Come back next Monday. We'll do another card class together and hopefully that one will go a little bit better. You just never know, right? Technology is not my friend, has never been. All right. Thanks again, everyone. I will read your comments and reply if you have questions. Appreciate all of your support and your love. And until next time, stay inspired, create something beautiful, and share the love. Bye, everybody.